It was an extraordinary moment when the entire world held its breath, then watched on in awe. Well, in a minute, we'll meet our mystery guest, one of the Apollo 11 astronauts, a man who actually walked on the moon. But first, let's look back at that day and how it touched us. We're getting a picture on the TV. July 20, 1969. They reckon 600 million people around the world were watching. And most of them had to pinch themselves to believe it was true. This was history playing out live on TV. A man was on the moon. That's one small step for man. Back on Earth, school kids downed pencils and crowded round the television. 12-year-old Colin McKellar was already a space nut. He watched it all on the only set at Marsden High School in Sydney. I think everybody was just excited. I had a little model of the lunar module, the lander, up on top of the TV set, uh, just to remind us what we were there watching. And um, it was one of those days that just goes down in history as, as a really feel-good sort of day. Five-year-old Wilson De Silva was at home. He was trying to watch Batman when he got a little surprise. As a kid, I obviously wasn't reading papers. I didn't know they were going to the moon. To me, the fact there were two guys walking on the moon wearing these cool suits just had an effect on me for the rest of my life. Wilson went on to become a science journalist and now he's getting ready to go into space himself. He'll be a passenger on the first Virgin Galactic flights in 2009. Right in the thick of the moon landing action was a fresh-faced young reporter for the Daily Mirror, Mark Day. He was at the launch site Cape Canaveral. There was an enormous buzz of expectation, but, you know, the funny thing was, it was all so scripted that really most of us were there wondering, what do we do if it all goes wrong? And it really was the most exciting day in a young reporter's life. Oh, I was at Forest High School yeah. and there was a little black and white television in the corner of the gym and there were hundreds of us sort of all crowded around it, just amazed. It's a day you'd never forget. Oh, so exciting. Well, another person who can tell us exactly where he was that day joined us now live via satellite from Los Angeles. Please welcome one of the first men to step foot on the moon, Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin. talk to you. Tell us when you took that first step, did you actually appreciate the moment or were you so caught up in doing your job? I don't think we were at all aware of the greater impact and I don't think we really wanted to uh, investigate and find out just how significant it would be because we might get halfway there and have to turn around and go back again, and that would really be quite a disappointment. When you actually took that step on the moon and you started to walk around, did, did you look around? Did you take it all in? What did you see? Well, certainly we looked around. We see that uh, uh, black velvet sky, and you could really see the horizon curve away from where we were. But you could see so clearly uh, boulders that were uh, on the horizon because there's no, uh, no haze, no air there to, uh, to limit your vision. And the sun is very brilliant and it was shining behind us. Uh, that gave us good visibility as we're coming down to land. How did it feel to be the only people within hundreds of thousands of kilometres? Well, it... It certainly uh, drifted through my mind how ironic or how uh, dichotic maybe it, it was that we were further away than people had ever been, not just in distance, but in what we had to do to get back home. But at the same time, there were more people, millions and millions of people paying attention to us. And in a way, after we got back and uh, we saw the pictures of the exuberance of people all around the world, uh, I, I just couldn't resist uh, tapping Neil on the shoulder and say, hey, hey, Neil, look, we missed the whole thing. <laughs> uh, it was be because we were very interested in what was going on, 
but we didn't get to share in the uh, moment of exhilaration because, uh, see, we were out of town. How was it decided that Neil Armstrong would would get out first? Did you sort of elbow each other at the door or did you, <laughs> did you toss a coin or how was that decided? <laughs> well, you know, if you flip a coin, it doesn't come back down again if you're uh, <laughs> in space. There were uh, uh, points of view that could uh, really go either way, but it was certainly appropriate, more appropriate for, for him to, as the commander to be the person to sure. represent the crew, represent NASA, the nation, and the world, for that matter, I think the most appropriate description uh, of the entire effort, particularly ours, is what we left on the plaque that said, we came in peace for all mankind. And, and, and it was symbolized a little bit by the, uh, the, the patch that we have that shows the eagle taking the olive branch of peace from the earth uh, to the surface of the moon. Buzz, are you still in contact with Neil and Mike? Not as much as I uh, would hope we would. We still have reunions now, but a lot of them are going in different ways and, and, and supposedly want to live a, a different part of their life. So I pretty much stayed very close to the space program and developed my uh, intuition and thinking out of the box to help improve our uh, transportation view of the future and how to get to... Uh, how to get to Mars after we go to the moon, plus trying to help uh, get enthusiasm among the people to support the exploration activities. Well, at 77 years of age, it sounds as though you are still absolutely flat out. Buzz Aldrin, thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's been a pleasure.